Welcome to part E of the Elasticity Lectures. And in this lecture, we're going to continue working with the same linear demand function, P equals 12 minus 2Q. And what we did in the last lecture was calculate the elasticities between two points, between each two quantities, quantity of 0 and 1, 1 to 2, etc. And as the quantity goes up, the price goes down. And I drew these little orange boxes around each of these uh, regions where we were calculating the elasticity to try to emphasize the point that the type of elasticity we're calculating between two points is called an arc elasticity. And so let me type that up here, arc elasticity, because it's like we're calculating the elasticity between two points along a curve or along an arc although you know this is a straight line so this is the elasticity between when you uh, price of 12 and 10 a quantity of 0 and 1 now there's another way of calculating elasticities that is what we call a point elasticity of demand function and let me show you where this formula comes from derive it for you uh, it's not all that difficult now remember the price elasticity of demand is the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price and the way we calculate that is the change in quantity over the average quantity times 100 same thing for price change over average times 100 for the percent change in price and we can cancel those two 100s in the function if we want to and we're left with change in quantity over the average on the top change in price over the average price on the bottom now let me work with this function. Now, we have a fraction divided by a fraction. And if you recall, in uh, when you're dividing one fraction by another, they tell you to invert and multiply. So invert this uh, fraction on the bottom and multiply. And I'm also going to get rid of the word average here. And if you do that, here's what it looks like. Uh, you have change in quantity divided by quantity times price over change in price. And let me just rearrange this a little bit, just moving things over a little bit. Uh, the, you can rearrange that as the change in quantity divided by the change in price times price over quantity. Now, I got rid of the average because what this allows us to do is to look at just one price and one quantity at a time and this is the point elasticity formula so for one point along the demand curve we're going to use these uh, blue points here as our points to calculate elasticities um, you can just use a pr one price and one quantity but how do you get a change in quantity or a change in price if you're just looking at one price you might ask well that's a valid question here's how we do it change in quantity is run think about a last uh, a slope the slope of this function is rise over run as the quantity changes that's the run and as the price changes that's the rise or a fall actually in this case and so change in quantity is run change in price is rise so what we do instead of putting in an actual change in quantity and change in price here we put the rate of change in quantity over change in price along this line because that that rate of change that slope is the same along the whole line and so since it's not rise over run but run over rise this function can be rewritten as price over the quantity times 1 over the slope but since this is run over rise so it's 1 over rise over run and so after you write the function this way for any price and quantity combination you multiply it times 1 over the slope to get the price elasticity of demand at that point and so let's go ahead and do this let me move these uh, functions out of the way I'm just going to move this one down here so we can see it and give us some room to work so I'm going to copy these prices and quantities down here. And 
all we have to do to calculate the elasticity is take the price, divide it by the quantity, and multiply it times 1 over the slope. Now looking at this equation, p equals 12 minus 2q, you can see that the slope is minus 2. So 1 over the slope is going to be 1 over minus 2 for all of the points along the demand because it's the same slope. So let me just put in a little uh, function here to calculate the elasticity uh, at each point along this curve. It's going to be something like equals, and I'll put P divided by Q, so that's in my spreadsheet, this is I20 divided by Q20, so I20 divided by Q20, which is uh, 12 divided by 0. You you might see that we're going to have a problem here when we divide by zero. That's okay. Let's just go on ahead. Let's forge ahead. Uh, times 1 over the slope. Times 1 over minus 2 is the slope. Now, Excel is going to give us an error here. Let me expand this a little bit. Because we divided by zero. That's okay. Uh, let's just let it happen and I'm just going to copy this formula down and it's always going to be price over quantity. Let's do this one and talk it out. 10 over 1 price over quantity times 1 over minus 2. So 10 over 1 is one, uh, 10 times 1 half, you know, 1 over 2 but it's minus 1 half. So 10 over 1 times a half that's 5 but it's going to be minus 5. But let me just copy the formula down and um, I paused the video. I had a, an error in my formula before but again 10 divided by 1 uh, times 1 over minus 2 gives us minus 5 and let's copy this formula down just at different prices and quantities the same slope and see what happens to the elasticities. You see that uh, up here, dividing by zero, some people would very sloppily say that uh, when you divide by zero, you get uh, infinity, a negative infinity in this case. And you should say undefined, but in this case, you can think about this elasticity uh, getting close to or approaching infinity as the quantity approaches zero. Uh, so very inelastic and then minus 5, uh, sorry, very elastic, uh, a little less elastic, a little less unit elastic, um, 0.5 is a little inelastic, more inelastic, and then finally an elasticity of 0 at this point at the bottom here where the price is 0 and the quantity is 6. Now let me fill these in on the chart here so we can see what's going on a little better. Okay, now I've put these elasticities here on the line. Now we have so many elasticities it's getting cluttered, but you can see at this point the elasticity is approaching negative, infinity, negative infinity, and uh, it'd be, it's extremely elastic, and then still elastic but less so between these two points, and then at this point, this uh, point elasticity of demand formula said it's minus 5. And then between these two, next two points, it's minus 3 using the arc elasticity formula. But then at this next point, the elasticity is minus 2, and so on. So you see this pattern. No matter how you calculate the elasticity, you see this same pattern where it's more elastic at the top and less elastic at the bottom, uh, culminating in, at this last point at the bottom price zero, quantity six, the point elasticity formula gives us an elasticity of zero. Now as we saw in the last lecture, we guessed that the price elasticity of demand would be equal to minus one here at six, price of six and a quantity of three, and it turns out that that is exactly right. And as I mentioned before, that's, that's always going to be the case if the y-intercept is $12, the price elasticity of demand is going to be exactly equal to minus 1 exactly at this point halfway down at $6. So 
halfway right in the middle of the demand curve. And also, remember as we, sh as we showed last time, that that total revenue is maximized at that point also where the price elasticity is equal to minus one. Now why is that the case? Intuitively, here's the way to think about it, that as we raise the price, if the price elasticity of demand is inelastic, that means that we can raise the price more than the quantity goes down. A big raise in the price, but the percent change in quantity is smaller. It makes sense that your total revenue will go up. P times Q will increase if I can raise P a lot. Uh, and quantity doesn't go down much. But as I raise my price here, uh, when I raise my price a little, the quantity goes down even more. 